Yo, this is Zach Scott here with another quick Source Filmmaker tutorial. Today I'm just going to go through a quick lighting setup, and I want to try and keep this under uh, 8 minutes, because the last one ran a little long at 7 minutes. So, uh, I will warn you, I am doing this under the influence, I've been drinking a little bit tonight, but, you know, so what, you can still film like, so, just a heads up if you hear me drinking or burping or whatever. Um, this is actually the second time I did this, the first time I recorded a great tutorial, but, uh, didn't have the microphone on, so I'm going to quickly show you how to make a lighting setup like this, where you just have two characters lit by um, three lights, and uh, just kind of go into the, the details of what good lighting can be, um, and how to produce the effects that you want in terms of uh, lighting for film. So, as you can see, I've, I've got this set up, and there, there are a couple of key things that I really want to go for with my lighting. And the, the main purpose of lighting here is to... It's not to, to make a character show up on film... Or rather, it is, but it's not just by making them bright, right? It's about defining shape on your character. It's about bringing out all the features of your character that you can and really just adding some dynamic like interest to the shapes and silhouettes of your, of your actors. Um, so in this case, uh, Peabody's got this big egg shape, and I want to get this nice, uh, this nice line going down his um, self. And I want to get these nice uh, rim lights uh, helping to define where um, the robot starts and the walls and environment end. Um, and so I'm just going to run through that. I've got my three lights here set up, so I'm just going to uh, nuke them out and start again from scratch. So let's just kill those guys. Yep, and so now we have a completely unlit scene. So I'm just going to drop in a light, and I'm going to drop in another light, and another light. Uh, by default, if I were to grab... Um, Let's just say I take all three of these and turn them down, down, down. Just for a second, I'm going to show you the uh, Valve um, lighting rig, which is a great thing to use. Their lighting kits are awesome, except their lighting kits are tuned specifically for one character and also just for one human-sized character. So uh, they're great to use, but if you don't necessarily know everything that's going on inside of them... Um, you can't necessarily know how to replicate that out for a larger scene or for multi-character shots. See, like, here I have my lighting kit, but it's only really dealing with, um, balls. But if I were to put it on Wheatley, or Peabody, sorry, it wouldn't, like, we'd get a little bit of bleed between the two, and it would be less than ideal to, to try and light them both with different lighting kits. It could be done, but I really want to try and get them with, uh, with one setup that covers both characters, which means I have to build my own lighting setup. So I'm just going to rip this out and um oh it didn't wasn't updating okay there we go rip that out and turn this back on and so i'm just gonna make that get another light get another light i'm just gonna darken these for now but what these are basically gonna be is uh eight will be my key uh nine will be my rim and ten will be my fill and uh so first off is the key light the key light's great the key light is your main light it'll be um Generally, the the one you use to bring out the the to light the character and bring out the shadows. Um, if you were filming a normal like standard conversational scene, this is way bright. Um, but a standard conversational scene, you'd probably have this at about thirty degrees uh, above the eye line, looking down on the characters. Um, if these were human beings, uh, I think the rule of thumb uh, that people go by is. Um, if the nose casts a shadow on the lips, that's bad. So you want the nose to cast a shadow, but just not quite on the lips. Um, if you were lighting humans, if you were in a, uh, and that's all based on the scene that you want. If you want a scary scene, the key is the light that you put to, you know, get the flashlight up in somebody's face and light them from below and all that. Like, oh, spooky, you know. Um, not that that was a particularly good example, but here we go. So I'm just going to use this to bring out uh, lighting the left, no, right side of these characters and bring out the shape of Eggbot and, uh, you know, the, the ball shape of balls and all that. Um, and so maybe try and use it to cast a few shadows on the walls, but that's optional. Um, I don't necessarily need to use it for that. Uh, and I want to get this to be a little colored. Um, your key light and your bounce light or your fill light are what you're going to use for coloring. Don't use your rim light for coloring. Um, like, you could, but you shouldn't. Uh, the reason is, as long as the rim light is white, it will show through no matter what the coloration of your scene is. 
um, if we had a big red rim light with a red key light and a red background, um, you're really going to lose the rim, and instead of defining the character, it's just going to make the character blend in that much more to the background. Um, so if you're going to do coloration, you really want to do that on your fill or on your bounce or on your key, but never on your rim. Um, so I'm going to just make this a little bit red, I guess is kind of how I had it set up before. Almost pinkish. Uh, pull the green down, pull the blue down. Ah, drink some beer. Let's see. So I got this um, fucking bar in the way. So I'm just going to turn the volumetric on on this for a second. I'm not going to use volumetric for any of these lights. Um, it can make things look really good, but don't underestimate the power of a non-volumetric light. Because a, a volumetric light will um, it'll look great. It'll give you the great volumetric shadows, but it'll also kind of fog up your scene with this uh, with this these ambient light particles. And it's it's a cool effect, but if you go overboard, you end up just washing out your entire scene. And what you really want is that contrast that brings out all the motion and all the shape of all your characters in the entire um, scene itself. So I'm going to brighten or widen this up just a little bit. Uh, but really, I'm turning on volumetrics here just so that I can um, see exactly where the light starts. So I want to bypass this beam, so I'm just going to bring in the min distance to about there. So now I've, I'm effectively avoiding the shadow from the beam that I was having earlier that was kind of blocking my characters. <coughs> Yeah, so there we go. Um, bring that in a little bit. And then I want to bring this around. Push this out. Yeah, pull this in. I want to get the shadow um, on Peabody about like, like about there. So it's a little bit thinner than where it is right now. So I'm just going to bring that around. Okay, that's good. So that you can still see that his eye is... Um, firmly on the lit side of himself but he's got this thick nice shadow i'm going to bring the intensity down on that because that's a little high um turn off volumetric sorry i just had to check to make sure i'm still recording here uh and scrub a little bit and see what's going on cool so yeah if i go to nice and lit that's lit and that's a little bit too red so i'm going to make this um a little bit whiter and a little bit bluer. You know, I'm just going to make this straight up pretty blue, actually. Just light this completely differently than before. Um, cool. So let's move on to the rim. Grabbing light 9, which I'm going to use as my rim. Rim is your second most important light. It's uh, used to really define the characters here. As you can see, um, if I were to move this out of the way, whoa. Um, if I were to move this properly out of the way. You can see that on uh, balls here, you can tell where he starts and ends from the background, but not by much. Uh, it's easier when he's on this white background, but he doesn't necessarily contrast enough, especially over here between him and the background. Um, ideally, I would light the entire background as well, um, but in this example, I'm not going to, but it's fairly easy. You just grab your fill, make a duplicate, and you know cast some shadows in the background or whatever you want for your scene. Um, but the, the rim here is important to just kind of get the shape of all of, of, all of our characters here. Um, so I've got this rim. It's, it's kind of dark, kind of hard for me to tell. I'm going to turn on volumetric on this again just so that I can see where it is. Because um, unless you're looking at exactly where it's hitting, it, it's can, it can be difficult to tell where it's pointed. You can also use light frustums, but uh, I prefer to just see the, the cone itself. Um, so, yeah. Let's get this going. I'm going to put this almost 180 degrees behind my characters as well. And like the fill, I'm going to knock the minimum distance down so that I can avoid these bars that are in the way. Sorry. Minimum distance. There we go. Whoa. What the hell? That's behaving really weird. What the fuck? Is that not updating? or Am I outside the level or something? Hmm. That is bizarro. Um, let me grab this whole light just to try and see. Oh, is it underneath the maximum distance? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on with this. What the? Oh, I got the wrong light. Derp. Sorry. There we go. Let me grab the correct light. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, and I'm just going to drag this in so that I'm inside the bar. I'm going to widen this 
rim up a little bit too. Uh, because I really need it to be able to light both of these characters. And by default, it's a little bit too thin. Um, yeah, so there we go. I'm going to bring this down. Um, just make sure it's just inside the, the elevator. I'm going to bring this around. Um, yeah, so here we go. We're starting to get some rim. That's a really thick rim. Uh, you really want almost the thinnest rim you can possibly get. Um like one or two pixels wide, uh, it can be tempting to get a really thick rim, and in some cases that might be the best way to go. Uh, but I'm just going for you know stock default uh, lighting. If you have special reasons to do it, like if something's um, if something's like coming in from the side, you might need to add a, a a different kind of colored rim for for highlights. But I'm just trying to get the characters to stand out. So I got my rim here. I'm going to pull this around um, a little bit more. Right now, it seems like it's lighting balls a lot less than it's lighting Peabody. So I'm going to keep going till I'm more uh, more behind them. Um, let's see. Hmm. Maybe I'll widen this up a little bit more still. Yeah. Get that wider and wider. And I just want to get that rim back on, on you, but it's really thick over here. Let me turn this uh, intensity down a bit. I can live with this. This is about good. Um, yeah, for the sake of demonstration, I guess. Cool. So I'm going to turn off volumetric on that because, again, volumetric can look good, but too much of it is unnecessary. It's really best to use volumetric specifically because you can see as we as we drop that out, we suddenly have a lot of definition on our characters. Um, there's a lot of contrast, which is really nice. Uh, yeah. For the sake of demonstration, I'm going to take a fill and um, make it more colorful again. Uh, yeah, so maybe just get back to that reddish, kind of reddy red, not pink. A um, little bit less blue, a little less green. Eh, that's really red. Uh, cool, so you can see we have a lot of white coming over from our fill, uh, rim. I wouldn't normally have that much. God, that's a lot of rim light white huh I wish I could make this orthographic um let's see I'm just gonna adjust that a little more uh, see I can get a really strong rim on Peabody or a really strong rim on balls but it's hard it's really tricky to get a, the best of both worlds um, and actually I know I kind of passed through rim but I'm gonna turn it back on again and just kind of take another stab at this um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back a ways yeah, pull this back a ways and push in the min distance even more. Just so that I'm dealing with a wider rim when it hits these guys, um, which might help it to shadow them better. Or not shadow, but uh, give them a better rim. So pull this in, go around. Yeah, I'm using all the... Uh, screen space transform widget because it's the best widget ever um seriously they cannot make a better widget than this one yeah fuck it that's fine cool so i'm gonna do some bounce uh bounce is good bounce or fill um take your pick bounce is for simulating the bounce of this red light um but fill can be used for almost exactly the same purpose in this case i'm just, just going to take my key and uh duplicate it out and the goal for this light is uh, we have this really thick shadow on um, this guy and some on Peabody. Uh, and we just kind of, we want to fill in these darkened areas so that they have some tone to them, but not so much that we lose our shadows. So it can be a really delicate balance. And in some cases, you don't even, you don't even need a fill. Um, I think by default on Valve's light rigs, they turn it off. Um... But I'm just going to use it just to show kind of how it can properly be used. And as you see here, um, like, I ju just thrown it on these guys. Like, suddenly, um, Balls is a lot more shape here. Uh, yeah. <sighs> He's got a lot of shape. He's got um, some definition, like, just taking that down. I'm actually going to turn it to really low settings here. Um, just brutally low. Let's see. 
Uh, oh yeah, quick tip, if you double click in these sliders, you can get a numerical value. So this is at 0.7, I'm actually going to knock this down to 0.3. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty dim, but it's enough that we just start to be able to see the other side of um, this ball and uh, get a little bit of definition in here as well. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Um, but you can see here that uh, as I drop this um, drop this fill on, our white rim light still remains visible. It's uh, really thin, but you can tell where they where he starts and ends, um, and that's because the the white light won't get washed out by the colors. It'll always come through. Um, I'm gonna take this fill, make it a little bit bluer as well, just to kind of get a little bit of contrast. Uh, Red and blue is always nice, I guess. Um, almost a purplish. Uh, and this could be better, but as you can see, it's um, it's doing its job of, of differentiating these characters from the wall. Ultimately, this red is super extreme. I wouldn't go with this in a real setting. I'd go with something a little more, um, more white and, and neutral. Or uh, if it really called for it, I'd go for some red. Not this ugly shade though but um it does the job i guess for explaining these things so let's see where am i at holy shit 16 minutes god damn it fuck god my first my first one was so much faster uh but you can kind of get the idea here of, of how we can bring out shape in these characters so i hope you learned something um that you can use around here i saw another lighting tutorial that was just shit so i felt that i needed to um put this together quick. This is actually my fifth try somehow. Uh, I kept fucking it up, but I think this one works. So uh, take it easy. I know that went a little long. Um, I hope you stayed for the whole thing, and I hope you learned something. Peace.